All right, the Eagles made a couple more roster moves with one really helping out the running game. Plus, with all the injuries to deal with, it's time for Jahan Dotson to break out, and he says he's ready for it. Also, it turns out that BG might not be retiring after all, as Vic Fangio certainly helped with that, and the defensive coordinator showing more creativity with a few changes. Meanwhile, the Birds are doing something really strange with Devin White, so let's talk about it and see if any of it makes sense. But first, let's run it. What's up, guys? Do me a favor and hit that like button because the Eagles are 2-1 and one and first in the division. Okay, yeah, you're right. The Commanders are also right up there at 2-1 and one after some crazy good play from Jaden Daniels, who, by the way, has zero turnovers through three games. In fact, the Commanders as a team don't have a single giveaway. Meanwhile, the Birds are tied for second in the NFL with six which is probably what had Colin Cowherd using the analogy that the Eagles are like a company with a good stock price, but everybody inside knows they have major issues, and the public just doesn't know about it yet, saying Philly's just one bad earnings report away from the whole damn thing unraveling. Okay. Sell it all. I somewhat get it. We live in a knee-jerk reaction type of world. After all, the hype of the season opener in Brazil and coming away with the win naturally transpired into the hope for the real home opener versus the Falcons only to then see the team fall flat on their face at the link. Yet as I've tried to remain optimistic, we got to see what this team can be with a little fight, determination, and some dang good defense, naturally changing so many people's outlooks for the birds. Something just came across my desk, John. It is perhaps the best thing I've seen in the last six months. I got a fresh start. I'm excited to show the world what I'm able to do. I got great teammates. I got a great offensive line. They've been doing a great job for me. Um, and we're going to keep picking each other up and keep rolling. Well, he's literally done just that so far this season. Seriously, having Saquon behind the Eagles O-line is like a Madden Ultimate team. Except, well, hopefully this group doesn't get deleted. But moving on, the new Eagles running back has 351 rushing yards through three games. By the way, that's number one in the league in case you were wondering. Yet amazingly, that might not be his biggest contribution. Since shout out to my guy, Mr. Crockpot, but Saquon has only given up one pressure in 13 pass blocking snaps this season, as opposed to last season when Kenny Gainwell gave up 70 pressures and one sack in 71 snaps, while DeAndre Swift allowed 45 pressures and one sack in 47 snaps. Like we all knew that it wasn't great last year, but to see that Jalen got pressure on nearly every single snap, whether it was Kenny Gainwell or it was DeAndre Swift, it's kind of crazy because Saquon is one of 13. It is a night and day difference. Just like the Eagles offense has looked drastically different, thanks to Kellen Moore, and in particular with how Jalen Hurts handles the blitz. For example, according to Pro Football Focus, Hurts has faced extra rushers on 38 of his dropbacks this season and is completing 72.7 of his passes while averaging 7.2 yards per attempt on those plays. Meanwhile, he's been sacked just twice against the Blitz this season so far, which kudos to EJ Smith for pointing out, but compare that to Jalen's 63.1% completion percentage against extra rushers last year and 6.9 yards per attempt, and it's looking promising. Of course, the real test will be this Sunday versus Todd Bowles and the history with the Bucks and everything there, but I'll get to that more in a future video. Also, speaking of videos, I've got a giveaway going on right now for any subscribers of the channel. Just, you know, obviously make sure to subscribe to the channel and then go check out my previous video for details on how you could win two Eagles tickets to any game of your choice. How can I afford to do that, you might ask? Well, that's thanks to the sponsor of today's video, Rocket Money. I mean, with all the giveaways that I do, I really need all the help I can get when it comes to saving and budgeting money. Like, I know it's important to say, but I just can't help myself from buying all the latest Eagles gear and memorabilia and tickets. And with studies showing that over 30% of people won't have enough to retire, it got me thinking. Because unfortunately, not everyone can be Howie Roseman when it comes to balancing a budget, which is why I turned to Rocket Money. Because Rocket Money is a personal finance app that helps you cancel your subscriptions, lower bills, and really just manage your money better. Now, my personal favorite has been the canceling subscriptions part. Since, for example, let's say there's something you were forced to buy so that you could watch, but then inevitably you forgot or even lost track of all your subscriptions. Well, you're in luck because Rocket Money safely and securely identifies recurring charges and cancels unwanted subscriptions for you. You can even cancel from within the app within just a couple taps. No need to worry about customer service calls or that incredibly hard to find cancellation link. Rocket Money has helped save members an average of $720 a year with over 500 million in canceled subscriptions. Seriously, they're literally saving you time and money. So take control of your finances today and go to rocketmoney.com slash special, or just click the link in the description to get started for free. All right, while I'm buying that, I'm not buying the Jalen Hurts question on if he's slowly turning into Carson Wentz. Sure, even saying that sounds a bit drastic, especially given the fact that Jalen Hurts has the highest win percentage since 2022 out of all NFL quarterbacks and is already tied with Nick Foles for the most game-winning drives with the Eagles with nine. However, the area that continues to have some Birds fans concerned are the turnovers, which is somewhat understandable. Because since opening day last year, Hertz's 18 interceptions are tied for the second most in the league, behind only Sam Howell's 21. Of course, to his credit, Jalen does recognize it, suggesting that he needs to start taking what the defense gives him and not being so aggressive at times. Remember, that's what seemed to be the major catalyst for Wentz's ultimate demise. 
when he turned the ball over 18 times in just 12 games in 2020. Yet let's be real, there was a time when Wentz could do no wrong. So I somewhat get the thinking of, we've seen this movie before, since Hertz has now thrown an INT in seven consecutive regular season games as well, which is, by the way, just three shy of the franchise record. Still though, I'm not going far enough to say Jalen's not him because ultimately it comes down to one thing, and that's winning. Plus, with a new offense and new coordinators again, I think we can pump the brakes just a bit. Which, by the way, ironically was what Colin Howard was saying after the Falcons game, and then totally switched up his stance one week later. Hypocrisy knows no bounds. Look, if we're sitting here in three weeks and Jalen still has not cleaned up the turnovers and there's no end in sight, then yeah, maybe we can start having a little bit of concern. But ultimately, I think it's going to get better with time due to Kellen Moore's willingness to change things on the fly. The beauty of having Kellen... Uh, on the sideline is, you know, he has a better feel for the game. You, he can he can get a feel for the game. So sometimes, you know, you're in the game and you get in that, that zone and uh, you're flowing, right? You know, you can look to the sideline or when you're over there, you can let them know, like, this is what I see, this is what I like, and this is what I don't like. Um, you can have those conversations and um, it can get changed right there. I can't stress enough how great of a change Kellen Moore's presence has been for this offense. Although, to his credit and professionalism, the OC emphasized that it's a collaborative effort. We're, we're all teaming up on this thing and, and we're trying to get the calls in as fast as possible and at the same time playing situational football and, and making decisions at a critical time very quickly. And so uh, we all lean on each other. Uh, yeah, I think we, we have an excellent process here. It's been a really fun process just because of how much work we put into it during the week to, to prepare ourselves for those situations. Yeah, well, I talked about it a lot in the previous video, but as long as the Eagles can make Kellen Moore the continual play caller and keep Sirianni away from it as much as possible, then I think we'll be okay. That's all I have to say about that. Having said that, the Eagles are going to need some guys to step up, as they officially signed tight end Jack Stoll to the active roster, due to Grant Calcaterra obviously forgetting completely how to block. But for real, though, I mean, this is a good move, considering the fact that you're probably going to run the football with Saquon Barkley, and we don't need anybody to run into our own guys and block our own team. Anyway, they also brought back John Ross on a practice squad deal, which obviously makes a ton of sense, considering the fact that Britton Covey suffered a broken bone in his shoulder and will be out at least four games with Philly sending him to the IR. Of course, naturally, that brings up the question of who will return punts, and it appears that job will go to Cooper DeGene, since the Rook got one chance in the game versus the Saints after Covey went down. Granted, I hear you, that's an incredibly small sample size, so maybe someone else will get a crack. And unsurprisingly, I wouldn't mind seeing Isaiah Rogers get in the game, considering that he brings the sub-428 speed, or really just anything to get Zay on the field. I mean, I don't know that it's a guarantee, yet Fangio did suggest if there were injuries, then maybe we'll see number 34 for the very first time. When Slay went out, um, Keeley went in. Uh, is that just because he's more familiar with that side of the field versus, uh, versus Isaiah? No, it was just Keeley was, you know, up and ready to go for the game because he he, if we had played any six DBs, he would have been in there. We just thought the guys on the sideline, he was more into it and ready to go and spur of the moment thing. And if, um, you know, if this had happened earlier in the game and there's still a lot of football to play, probably would have seen Isaiah out there. Let's go. I'm taking that as a positive sign because I believe that's the first time we've heard Fangio openly admit about the chances of Zay playing since he had the hand injury. Which really brings up a great point to bring this up because unfortunately the member who won this is actually a no-show. They didn't claim the helmet, so I'm going to give away this signed Zay helmet on the Friday Night Live stream for anyone that wants to tune in. Anyway, speaking of no-shows, the Eagles appear to be down their top three receivers. Yes, I realize that technically Jahan Dotson was traded for to be the wide receiver three. However, if we're being realistic and looking at the numbers, Britton Covey was far outpacing the former first-round pick in targets. So, with A.J. Brown still rehabbing the hamstring injury and not wanting to rush back, plus Devontae Smith in concussion protocol after suffering the ridiculous cheap shot by the Houdat Bounty on Saints, Jalen Hurts currently has just two active receivers on the roster, in Jahan Dotson and Johnny Wilson. Just FYI, that hit on Devontae ended up resulting in a fine for Christian Boyd of less than 5000 Talk about protecting players. But, like I said, now we're down to Dotson and Wilson on the active roster. By the way, between those two guys, they have four catches on nine targets for 23 yards from QB1, so the chemistry might need a little bit of work. No, I don't like you. The sound of your piss hitting the urinal? It sounds feminine. Mm. Relax, it's not that bad. Those guys are going to get more repetitions with Jalen this week. It is going to be fine. And Dotson thinks the breakout game is about to happen. It's kind of the opportunity I've been waiting for ever since I got in the NFL. Uh, just to be able to be out there on Sundays and showcase my talent um, and be able to make plays for a football team. Uh, that's the, the goal at the end of the day, help the team win and, and make plays. Um, and that's what I'm going to do. That's what I've been capable of doing. Uh, and I'm just going to show that. Just in case you're not fully up on it, shout out to Anthony DeBona, but according to multiple reports, the Eagles didn't have A.J. or Smitty practicing, and then Lane Johnson, Jordan Mailata, and Dallas Goddard were in attendance but not fully participating. However, the silver lining is that thankfully Slay and Mekhi Becton were practicing. 
Now, obviously, it'd be great to have both wide receiver ones back in action, but if I had to guess, I'm really thinking that A.J. Brown is the only one who might come back for Tampa. After all, the Eagles didn't place him on the IR, so the initial hope was that he'd be able to make it back quicker. But even if he doesn't make it back, we'll be fine as long as Dallas Goddard's there along with Saquon. Like, remember, there's a reason how he went out and got a guy like Kellen Moore to run the offense. All right, fine, no one anticipated this magnitude of injuries. However, as you can see, the Bucks are dealing with a ton of injuries as well, so it's not like we're the only ones dealing with problems. Yet, shout out to Fran Duffy that even being down several weapons, Kellen can scheme open the best players. The biggest thing that you can do against a double team is run away from it. And that's what Dallas Goddard does here. He's running the shallow cross and a mesh concept. And since the Saints are in man-to-man -man coverage, this is going to be a very effective tool against it. And again, Tyron Matthews playing with a lot of depth. He's playing more than 10 yards off the ball. And so he's not going to be able to intersect this shallow crossing route. And so when Jahan Dotson sets this pick on Harris, he does a great job with his technique here. He throws that little stutter step at Harris. You can see Matthew, he's in no position to be able to intersect it. So he, all he can do now is tackle the catch short of the sticks. Well, Goddard is one of the best in the league at creating yards after the catch, running through contact, and he creates an explosive play on third down. Harris is pissed because he's looking back. He's like, Matthew, why aren't you there? At the end of the day, Matthew's playing with so much depth, he's not going to be able to get there against that shallow cross. Also, let's just look at the catch. Outstanding grab there from Goddard. One hand outstretched, sticks the bear paw out, comes away with the big catch and a first down. Very next drive, the Eagles call basically the same exact play against a very similar coverage. Again, you're going to see it's third down, it's third and long this time, third and 16, and this time you're going to get, again, two sets of eyeballs on Dallas Goddard. You're going to get Harris and the safety Jordan Howden, who plays in their dime package. And so what you're going to get is the same concept. It's going to be another mesh concept from the Eagles here. We're going to get Dallas Goddard on the shallow cross, and you're going to get another crosser coming from the other side. That's Jahan Dotson, and Dotson does a great job of setting up Harris. Now, when he does that, the man who's following Dotson is actually Marshawn Lattimore, former All-Pro corner. And this is the beauty of these mesh concepts, because it's not just Dotson setting interference for DBs, but it's also the DBs that are following these receivers. You're just creating a whole cloud of potential interference. And so while Lattimore is trailing Dotson, the other safety who's doubling Goddard runs into Lattimore. So Howden collides with Lattimore. Paris is picked off by Dotson, and that's what makes... Dallas Goddard so wide open. All the other routes are cleared out. 60 plus yards the other way. I honestly couldn't believe it when that play happened. But as you can see, the OC still has the ability to scheme open guys in his system. Now, on the other side of the ball, it's kind of strange what the Eagles are doing with Devin White. I mean, here you have a guy that was signed for a guaranteed $3.5 million to be the team's starter. Or at least it was sold to him that way. Rather taking such and such with another team that don't have the pieces around to even allow me to become even better. You know, you come here, you got Jordan Davis. You got Jalen Carter, you got Bryce Huff, you got Josh Sweat, guys up front that's really holding it down. And if, you know, when the practice Lay on the max, I see what I'm trying to tell right. you. So it's like, it's pieces here. So it's like, and another thing I looked at it like, man, if I come here and be a dominant middle linebacker, that a, they, they, they ain't never had that. Like, you know, and not knocking the guys that's been here before, but I know what I bring and I know what they haven't had. So if I come here and handle my business, that can turn into some long term. And it's still around a great team. Yep. You know, the, the great team that's here now going to still be here if I sign long term, you know, or whatnot. So all that played a factor. And, you know, obviously just, you know, I knew I had to rebuild myself. I had to show the world again, which I don't mind doing. You know, I did it coming out of college. I did it when I first got in the NFL. I mean, year six, I'm better. You know, mentally, I'm stronger. Physically, I'm stronger. Football-wise, I'm way smarter. So it, I, I feel like... I got new coaches. They hungry. You know, uh, this is not the same coaching staff. My linebacker coach got fired in Tennessee, so he want to prove that, hey, I'm a good coach, you know, so I feel like it's a lot of light uh, personalities in the building. I told Howie, he FaceTimed me. Another reason why I was confident. He the only GM that wanted me, that FaceTimed me to talk to me like, like a man, like didn't go through Tory. Tory, what's his number? I okayed him to give him my number. He FaceTimed me and he said, bro, I was once in your position before. And I was the GM here, no, you don't even know it. Because I did, you know, I had a downfall and I had to work my way back up. He said, you in that same position. I feel like that was God. Like we got the same mentality, right? Like that's what I'm going through right now. I was just high up. Now I'm down and now I got to come back up again. This GM just called me on FaceTime and told me like, you know, we could use you here and told me his situation and felt like, man, we kind of attached in a certain way. Man, I just thought it was God. That was another reason why it was so easy to pull the trigger. I said, man, I'm coming. Like, I'm coming. Like, and then I, I know it's real genuine, man. Like, he take care of his player. Like, we know Smitty adult. 
Smith ain't been all pro or pro bowl, have he? Smith got, got that money. Thank you. Hearing that from a couple months ago and then seeing White take all the first team reps to then not even play is crazy. But come on, it's not like Howie Roseman envisioned this either, surely. Considering the fact that he talked up the signing and the thought was Vic Fangio could turn him back into the pre-2020 player he was. Heck, this dude was showing out at training camp. Yet fast forward to today, White has missed one game due to an apparent ankle injury and then two other games based on being a healthy scratch. But say what you will, kudos at least for him having a positive attitude about it. I've been through a lot of my life, uh, good and bad, you know, open and public, private, and uh, it just... It just make you grow up, you know what I'm saying? You know, everything not going to always be in your favor, you know, but it's about, about how you respond, you know, how you uh, handle yourself. But that's the only thing I can control. You know, I can't put myself in the game, but I can control my attitude, my effort at practice, and, you know, just uh, my swagger in the building still, you know, coming here every day like a pro and handling my business, rather. You know, I feel like my, I got a son. He can cry when he don't get his way. You know, that's for, for him to do, not me. You know, I got to set this down. I know he hasn't put up good numbers or filmed the last several years, but I'm still honestly curious why he wouldn't get at least the slimmest chance to prove things, especially with the way things were going. For real, I mean, I'm curious, does anyone have any theories for why that is? I mean, I'll give it to you that White was rumored to be on a trade target back whenever the Eagles were doing roster cutdowns, but nothing ever came of that leaving Derek Gunn to suggest that Philly shouldn't even consider trades anymore and just cut the 26-year-old. Of course, now there's new reports from ESPN that with recent injuries for the Bills, the Patriots, and the Raiders, that one of those teams might be interested in a former All-Pro. And yeah, I would say at the very least, if you're going to get rid of him, at least get something back for him. Because let's be honest, I know we had a Rashad Penny situation last season, but these are not the same thing. Whereas Penny was coming from a serious injury that ultimately left him not right. And heck, the dude is retired now. Hear me out though, I'm not saying that White is going to return to all pro form or anything like that, but to go out there and just straight up cut him is a little bit of an overreaction. What do y'all think though? If you had the option right now and seeing our depth, do you trade him, do you keep him, or do you cut him? Personally, I think I'd still keep him. Because even though we hope for no injuries, we all know it's a part of the game. So if Zach Bond or N'Kobe Dean ever went down, it'd be a nice luxury to have White services. Still, I don't think anyone's upset by how the starting linebackers are playing. Like, Bond literally leads the entire league in tackles. Yet it's also worth considering the fact that we don't know if N'Kobe can stay healthy for a full season. And in only three weeks, Bond has already surpassed his career high in snaps for a season. Plus, think about it this way. With a chance to play against your former team or at the very least suit up against them, you know he'd be amped to show out. Now, I will say I don't see it happening, especially with the linebacker's lack of ability on special teams. But come on, it feels like if White isn't active this week, then we have our long-term answer there. However, we might not have our answer when it comes to BG retiring. So let's get through this one first. And then, I said, either way, I'm going to be a part of whatever they're doing next year. Um, but, you know, it's, as a player, who knows? But I know for me, I do want to stay ready anyway as far as, you know, just being in shape. But... Might stay ready another year, depending on how everything goes. So Are you surprised how well the bodies are here? I ain't, ain't gonna say I'm. I was feeling good already, but I know just how you get start to get played a little bit. Like last year, when I had the three sacks, but I didn't play. I played, but I didn't play as much as I'm playing now. But you know, you just start to see the writing on the wall sometimes, and I thought it was until good thing, and now. Now I'm kind of back in the mix for real. Who wouldn't love to see BG for one more year? But I know we're getting ahead of ourselves. I will say that I can't wait to see Sidney Brown back out on the field. And the second year player continues to get the work in on the side while looking really close to being ready. Of course, again, for the record, the earliest he could come back would be after the bye, but I'm just excited to see Sid back out there. All right, I know a lot to cover, but let me know your thoughts on all this. And I'll catch you guys on the live stream. Until next time, this has been the Philly Special.